thank you so much for tuning in welcome 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 this one is for the grade 12s we're going to be doing life sciences and we'll be doing a question paper particularly 2015 because i feel that many times you may know the work but you may struggle to apply it or if you go through the question papers yourself you just look at the memorandum and you're like how did they get to this answer so yeah in this video we're just going to be doing question papers me sort of explaining how not sort of me explaining how to do certain things and how they go to certain answers so yeah and we'll be doing the 2015 paper so if you do if you don't have it please download it it's freely available just type life sciences grade 12 2015 on google and you will find it so yeah don't forget to like this video don't forget to comment and to subscribe okay okay so Let's we're going to it. do question 2.2 but specifically i would like us to do question 2.2.2 i'm skipping 2 to 1 because the answer is in the memo and you know it's it's pretty straightforward the genotype of a potential father has to be considered and the genotype of the mother and of the child so all of those are used in determining paternity because if the genotype of the father and the mother combined doesn't result in the same genotype that the child has then it's pretty obvious that he's not the father but anyways 2.2.2 so we have to use a genetic cross to show how it is possible for two parents that have blood group b to produce a child with blood group o okay so if you look if you just the first thing that you need to consider with this question is the fact that they don't give you like they don't tell you whether the parents are homozygous or heterozygous but with your knowledge you need to know that blood group o is a recessive allele and in order for a person to have a recessive trait in their phenotype they need um they need to be homozygous for it therefore you know that the genotype of the parents needs to be heterozygous and what i mean by that is that it needs to be i capital b and then a small i and then the father same thing i capital b and a small i because that is the only way that they will have a child with blood group o so you just do that cross as you see in the memo and you will see that that is how that that is how it is possible for the child to have blood group o what is important in this question you just need to know that the man and the woman both have to be heterozygous for blood group B, meaning their genotype has to be heterozygous for blood group B, for them to have a child with blood group O. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to do 2.3, and they tell us that it shows crossing over during meiosis. If there is anything I could tell you about meiosis, it is that you need, you need, you need, you need, you need, you need no prophase one more than any other phase because that is the most examined phase so yeah okay 2.3.1 name the phase of meiosis during which the process above takes place um crossing over happens in prophase one and prophase one only and then the next question we need to describe the process of crossing over here if you forgot to study what crossing over is don't do that you can just look at the diagram you need to know that first of all the homologous chromosomes almost always write down the homologous chromosomes don't just write chromosomes write that the homologous chromosomes lie next to each other and then the chromatids they touch at the chiasmata so yeah another key word there is chiasmata they touch at a point called the chiasmata and it is at that point where genetic information is exchanged so that is basically crossing over two homologous chromosomes lying next to each other they touch at a point called a chiasmata and genetic information is exchanged 
why is this phase so important first of all i wouldn't be me and you wouldn't be you if it wasn't for crossing over that is because crossing over results in genetic variation because the information that is exchanged it is exchanged sort of randomly so after crossing over the chromosomes will no longer be the same anymore but anyways let's go back to answering your question yeah crossing over results in genetic variation and that genetic variation results in characteristics may result (laughs) may not always it may result in characteristics that are favorable or those that are unfavorable and if the characteristics are favorable they can give that specific organism a greater chance at survival so there are many characteristics that are unfavorable that are crossed that are exchanged during crossing over but also there are many that are favorable so yeah that is the importance of crossing over mainly the fact that genetic material is exchanged okay draw a diagram okay i'm gonna skip that question <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna skip that question and then we're going to move on to question three so in this question it's about ebola you guys in that year that the reason why they have ebola is because ebola was a pretty big thing in that year i can guarantee you like guarantee you after you write your final exam please come back <laughs> to me your there will be something something on the coronavirus in your life science exam that is just how life science examiners are they always put something that is relevant <laughs> to that year somehow they find a way to put it in so anyways states why viruses that contain rna show more genetic variations than viruses containing dna luckily that answer is in the extract but also even if it wasn't you could have been able to answer it the reason why is that rna replicates at such a faster rate than dna therefore more mistakes are made in comparison to when DNA replicates and those mistakes result in genetic variation you know and then use one example from the extract above to show explain how mutations could increase the survival rates so in the extract in the extract they speak about um, Ebola virus could mutate they thereby enabling it to be transmitted through the air so if there's a mutation that happens that allows the ebola virus to be mutate to be um transmitted through the air then that's going to be a bigger problem so that mutation is one way that the survival rate of the ebola virus could increase okay okay tabulate okay i'm not i'm not going to focus on that too much but just to remind you that whenever they say tabulate please tabulate because as you see the question is out of seven but you need to put three structural differences so that extra mark is for you actually drawing the table and then state two uses of dna profiling i mean dna profiling can be used in solving crimes it can be used in um, identifying family relationships. That is just stuff that is in your textbooks that you just have to study. Just always, I always beg, I always just told myself I, I need to know five. Because I don't think they ask me for more than five uses. But yeah. And then the second question is, give two views against the use of DNA profiling. So there are people that are actually against DNA profiling and... The reasons are that since humans are the ones involved, they could be human, they could be errors, they could make mistakes. And those mistakes could like lead to the wrong person being um, arrested for a crime that he didn't do, you know. Or another thing is that it's very expensive. So not everyone can afford this. So that just leads to exclusion and, and, and. But yeah, 
again that is something that you just need to study okay question three okay i know you guys can read it so i'm not gonna read that whole introduction i'm just gonna get started with question 3.3.1 and as you can see it is a pedigree diagram 3.3.1 says name the genotypes of the individuals okay individual one so firstly you can see that individual one is a square and then you go to a key and you see that it is an unaffected male before you even fill in the alleles of individual one firstly because you know he's male so first write x y because males chromosome have chromosome x y and then if he's and if oh and also remember that the allele goes on the x chromosome and not on the y anyway so you go back to the question and they tell you that the dominant allele is represented by a capital a and recessive allele is represented by a small letter a so if he's unaffected then he should have capital a so we do that capital a and then y Number two, question B, I mean, number two, individual two, she is a female and she is also unaffected. So you do the same thing. You need to know that females have genotype XX and because she's unaffected, the first one is going to have capital A, but the second one is not going to have capital A. And the reason for that is if you look at her mother her mother is affected and her mother has i mean and for her mother to be affected she has to have two of the recessive alleles so and you know a person has one allele from their mother and one allele from their father so the second one is going to be a small letter a so that is the genotype of individual two what percentage okay you guys know maths you guys are smart <laughs> so you can do that or you can just look at the memo and then 3.3.3 explain why mm, sorry explain why any sign of an affected female will always have this order this is because an affected female has two of the recessive alleles right and a son gets the X chromosome from the mother and then the other one from the father so that X that he gets from his mom has a recessive affected allele yeah and since the other Y doesn't carry the allele the son is therefore automatically affected because they're yeah I don't, you know, I hope I'm making sense. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope you understood that. If you don't, please tell me. But I think I explained it well. But you just need to know that the son gets the X chromosome from the mother. And then the other one from the father. But since they only have one X chromosome, they don't have another one that could sort of delete the effects of that recessive chromosome. So that's why signs will always be affected if the mom is affected. Okay, so that is it for today. Um, I really hope you understand more and that I didn't confuse you. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in up until this point. Don't forget to ask me any questions if you do have and I will gladly answer. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe. I will be doing more question papers. And you could obviously um, ask, you know, me to do a specific one. So yeah, that is it for today. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.